Phrase 7 introduces the chorus. Muting strings 1 and 2 and 5 and 6, allowing only the open 3rd and 4th strings to ring out. Then add strings 1 and 2 with the index finger across the 3rd fret. 5 and 6 are still muted. Next, we play an F sus2 chord, which is held by barring the 3rd fret with the index finger on strings 1 through 4. Add the 2nd string 6th fret with the pinky, and the 3rd string 5th fret with the ring. Instead of strumming this F sus2 chord, call mute all 4 strings and pick the 4th string 3rd fret, then the 3rd string 5th fret, back to the 4th string, then to the 2nd string 6th fret, back to the 4th string, then the 1st string 3rd fret. Then stretch to the 6th string 5th fret with your ring finger, give it a half step bend, and release. Next, repeat the G chords, then repeat the F sus2 riff. Holding the chord, pick strings 4, 3, 4, 2, 4, 1, then to the 6th string 5th fret, bend and release. Back to the G5, then switch to the F sus2 and double pick each string twice starting with the 4th string, 3rd string, back to the 4th string, 2nd string, next is the 3rd string, to the 1st string, to the 2nd string, then a single 3rd string. This is the way Randy appears to have played this section on the old video footage and it sounds like this is what he is doing on the original recording and remastered versions. Here's phrase 7 pieced together with a slow tempo. Later in the song, Randy engaged his wah pedal after strumming the G5 chord, then disengaged just before the F sus2 chord. Another technique Randy used was to toggle the pickups on and off in time with the music. This is achieved by turning the volume and tone knobs all the way down for the neck pickup. And with the bridge pickups on, you're able to toggle back and forth. Phrase 8 ends the chorus with a descending chord progression, starting with the F, 2nd string 1st fret, 3rd string 2nd fret, and 4th string 3rd fret. Next is C. Keep your index finger on the 2nd string first, lift your middle finger, exposing the 3rd string open, and play the 4th string 2nd fret with the middle. Switch to a D5, placing your ring on the 2nd string 3rd fret, middle on the 3rd string 2nd fret, and the 4th string is open. Strum, then repeat the 4th string open, while you play this D5, keep your index finger on the 2nd string 1st fret for the next chord, which is an open C5. 2nd string 1st fret, 3rd string open, 4th string is muted with your ring finger, which holds the 5th string 3rd fret. And end on a G5. As previously mentioned, Randy would track several guitar parts, sometimes playing the same notes to thicken up the tone and other times playing slightly different sections. As this lesson progresses, I'll be showing you different ways Randy would play this walk down. As the first course ends and the next verse begins, 
Randy added a very unique fill to the end of the main riff. When playing the C5, Powell mute the open fifth string, but for the last note, play the G on the sixth string third fret. Then rapidly hammer and pull off on the third string, fifth fret to open. Do this six times. Drop down to the fourth fret, playing three times. Then down to the second fret, playing three times. Thank you.